Howdy friends, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about our one pound propane canisters that we like to use for camp stove and stuff and why you are being told lies about this not being refillable. All right, so a lot of y'all have been following my channel. You notice that I like to use my little camp stove outside and um, in order to fire up charcoal for the grill and stuff or to cook on as well as use them with an adapter for my little hiking stove and stuff like that. So these little one pound canisters, we go through them and they are useful in a backpack. They don't take up that much room. But what happens once these canisters are empty? Most people go ahead and they throw them away or they recycle them. That's waste. The truth of the matter is that these companies don't want to tell you that you can safely, in the comfort of your own property, refill these little canisters. I'm going to show you how. If you go to walmart.com, you can pick up what's called a one pound to 20 pound propane adapter. This is what it looks like. It's got a gauge on it, all that stuff. This hooks onto a propane tank, a feeder tank, a 20 pound, 30 pound, 40 pound, whatever it is. And this is your adapter for your one pound. And explain to you exactly why we would want to do something like this. Next time you're in your local Walmart and you go into the camping section, more than likely you're going to end up seeing on the shelves these canisters, these little one pound canisters of propane made by Coleman. And usually for the most part, you're going to find them in a two pack. And they write these days come about 10 bucks for the two canisters. You're only getting two pounds of propane. However, you're paying for the convenience, not the gas so much, not so much of propane, but the convenience of a little canister that you can use on little grills and stuff like that that are portable, you can take with you, like you see me on my hiking trips, and it's feasible to make up a little lunch in the woods like this instead of having to make a fire up. Well, here's the drawback. Once you're done, they're making you feel, and it even says non-refillable on these things, that these need to be recycled and you just need to go out and buy more. Wrong. Now, a quick disclaimer on doing what we're doing right now. You read on the back of this canister, this bottle, this is what they warn you of. It reads as such, never refill this cylinder. Refilling may cause explosion. Federal law forbids transportation if refilled. Doesn't say you can't refill it, but this is mainly for home use. We're not planning on filling these up and driving all over town and stuff like that. This is what it says on here. And it says it has a federal fine up to $500,000 or five years imprisonment. But if I'm using this at my home and my own personal use, we're not doing this as any kind of ploy to transport this anywhere in any kind of way or fashion. If I'm just walking down through the woods or hanging out in my backyard, it doesn't say anything about that. Like I said, if you go to Walmart, you're going to see two packs of these one pound cylinders and stuff. All you're getting is two pounds of propane, all right? And it's costing you 10 bucks just to buy these, and it tells you to dispose of these canisters, these cylinders, once you're done with them. However, the way we're doing things for our own personal use and stuff, if you have a 20 pound propane tank sitting in your house, and you have somewhere in your general area where you can take that tank and have it refilled, usually it's only gonna cost you about a buck a pound. Give or take where you are, so you're talking about 20 pounds of propane, for $20 just to review it. Now we're not talking about going to a local store and exchanging tanks. At that point, it's different. You can still use a certified 20 pound, 30 pound, 40 pound cylinder and have it refilled at a local place in your area. This way you're just pretty much paying a dollar per pound at that point. Let me tell you the math when it comes down to that and what you are doing wrong and how you can save money. All right, so do the math. All right, if you're spending average of $5 per canister for a cylinder for one pound, okay, if you can refill these, a 20 pound cylinder can fill up 20 of these tanks for a dollar a pound. So instead of spending two bucks to get two more refillables and you're not throwing these things in landfill or recyclable, you're able to use these tanks again and again and again with a feeder tank of some sort. Just be smart about things because if I can fill up 20 of these one pound cylinders for 20 bucks, think about it if I gotta buy 20 of these from Walmart, that's a hundred bucks, that's an $80 savings. Do the math. Now, once again, not to sound like a broken record, it does not say anything on the back of these cylinders 
that you can't refill them. It just says that you cannot refill them and transport them. There's a big difference when it comes to that. So don't give me any crap in the comments about I'm going to go to jail and I'm going to get a half million dollar fine and all that stuff if I do what you're doing, Tim, because there's nothing on the back of these cylinders saying that I can't refill them. It says you're not allowed to transport them legally without getting some sort of fine. Get it straight. A little adapter right here you can find at walmart.com. Okay, look at it very carefully. See that? It goes from a large propane tank into a one pound cylinder. And they run right about $22, walmart.com. So if you go on walmart.com and you order this product, those are the numbers right there. If you can read that, pause the video if you need to, all that good stuff. It'll arrive in a little package, in a little box like this. Be looking in the search engine at walmart.com for one pound to 20 pound propane adapter. All right, that being said and all that out of the way, let's go over to the deck and let me show you how this works. All right, so now that we have the adapter and I've talked about all the rest of the stuff, I'm going to show and demonstrate to you the proper practices, the factory recommendations when it comes to using this adapter. First things first, on the adapter, you want to make sure that we have it closed off in the off position. Also, it's recommended from the manufacturer of this adapter to turn your tank upside down. The tank that you're gonna be using, in this case, we're using a 40 pound tank and we've flipped it upside down and I'll explain that to you, the reason why, after we show you exactly how to do this. Our 40 pound tank is in the upside down position. We're gonna take our adapter. We have a shut off valve up underneath here. There's still room that we can open that up. We're in the off position with our adapter. We're gonna go ahead and take our black end of our adapter and we're gonna connect it to the feeder tank. Everything is in the off position. You want to make sure to take care and follow these directions because this is flammable substance we're working with. Something like that. If you look closely, our gauge reads three different levels. Where it is right now, it's empty. Red is critical. Yellow is about halfway. Our intentions are to get this to fill up where we're completely up there, almost to the top of the green, and then that will make it so we know our tank on our one pound tank is full. Okay, before we install this little one pound tank, there's a couple little disclaimers I wanna to talk to you about that they don't tell you about when it comes to filling these certain things. First of all, exercise the utmost safety because you're working with a flammable liquid. Once we get this thing screwed in here, if you look to the side, you see a little valve it's like a schrader valve in there when you start filling this tank up i'll let you know when it is time to turn that supply off and we're going to show you how to bleed the air out of this tank to get a true full pound of pressure inside this canister right, we have an empty tank here right now both of our valves are in the off position to the ad adapter as well as the propane tank itself nice and easy take your time these are fine threads we're working with we want to install this on the bottom part of the adapter. Now, at any time, if you're not sure what you're doing, stop what you're doing. And, you know, you have to be safe with this stuff. It's not going to explode on you. Don't smoke a cigarette or a cigar while you're doing this by all means, okay? This stuff is very flammable and it will explode if you don't exercise. Now we have this installed to the other end of the adapter. I'm going to show you how the proper way to go about doing this to fill this up to a true one pound of pressure inside this tank. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna turn this valve open and start releasing some of the gas into our little propane tank. You can hear it feeding. Once you stop hearing that feed, shut that valve back off. Listen carefully. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and shut that valve off and we're gonna take this canister off. We're gonna take it over to the scale, check it out. Remember, these tanks empty weigh 0.8 pounds. We're wanting to get this tank to reach 1.8 pounds. All right, here's our tank that we're trying to fill. Um, you're not gonna be able to see this very well. Remember, I said these tanks empty weigh 0.8 pounds. We've already added some propane to the tank. Right now, it's reading 0.8 still. And this, at this point, this is what you need to do. If you want to take a little needle nose pair of pliers, this is a safety feature on these little tanks. It's a Schrader valve. I'm going to take and I'm going to grab onto it and pull it outwards. Listen.
I'm bleeding this tank of the air, not the propane, the air. You're going to smell propane, but that's air that's stopping this thing from filling up with the liquid. I'm going to close it back off. We're going to put it back on our feeder tank and continue to fill this with the liquid petroleum. All right, we're going to put that tank back on here. Now, during this whole process, you're going to start feeling this canister get really cold. All right, that's normal. That's the liquid petroleum, the which is LP, propane, filling into this tank. Now we're gonna rinse and repeat. Go ahead, open up our valve again, and start adding some more propane into our canister. We're gonna listen to that until we can't hear anything else going back into it. It's the same thing I just said, rinse and repeat. After we can't hear anything else going back in here, we're gonna bleed the tank back off of all the air that's inside, weigh it, and we want to reach 1.8 pounds. I can't hear anything else now. We're going to shut it back off, take this back off, and we're going to see how much it weighs. All right, remember not to repeat myself, but these empty tanks are usually about 0.8 pounds. Now, after doing this for a second time, but bleeding air out and allowing that liquid form to go in here, that's the reason why we have this tank upside down. We're not getting uh, just gas, we're getting the liquid form that we're trying to fill this through. It's gone from 0.8 pounds to 1.2. So we're well on our way. We still have to acquire about 0.6 of a pound for this thing to be truly full. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put this back on the tank, fill it up until we can't hear anything going on inside the tank, pull it off, bleed the air once again, and then get this to the point where it is exactly 1.8 pounds. Back with the bleeding process, needle nose pair of pliers, nice easy pull outwards. You're getting rid of the air that's in the tank, not the propane. That's the air form, the gas form, not the liquid. You're gonna smell propane, but you're not losing the liquid form, just the gas. Put it back on the feeder tank and continue filling. I'm gonna put this tank on here. Let's see what it weighs now. 1.8 pounds. We have true liquid form of propane inside of this little canister now. See, that wasn't very difficult at all. Remember, the tools that you're gonna need is you're gonna to have to have some sort of a feeder tank, whether it be a 20 pound, 30 pound, 40 pound, that can use so you can refill these little cylinders, your one pound cylinders. Now, a lot of you folks just say, well, that's not really worth it to me. But guys like myself that use these little one pound cylinders and stuff, it's not just saving money, it's also helping saving the environment because I don't want to have to take, I feel bad about throwing these canisters in the recycle and stuff and they end up somewhere like maybe a landfill. Now that's not economically or uh, environmentally friendly when it comes down to any of this stuff. This is the reason why I spent the money, the $22 to buy this adapter in order to take care of these kind of things instead of spending 10 bucks every time I want to go down to Walmart and pick them up. Well, anyway, that's going to do it for this one. Thanks so much for hanging out and watching the video. Use this product with your own discretion. Remember, you're working with a flammable substance. A lot of people don't feel comfortable about doing all this kind of stuff, but if you're a guy like me that likes to live very uh, efficiently and make the most out of everything you get and most bang for the buck, this is a great little investment to have. Like I said, some of you folks don't have these little one pound canisters, but those of you do, you know, like do things like little camp stoves and all that other good stuff, this is a perfect way to do so, to save a lot of money, save on the environment, all that other good stuff. So, got any comments, questions, leave them down below. Until next time, I'll see you on the outpost.